is Mary. Welcome back or welcome for the first time to my channel. Um, right now, this is sort of like a catch-all channel where I discuss all the things I wish someone had put on the internet uh, to make your decision-making process or your life better. Today we're talking about college. For my personal experience, I did two years at NYU undergrad and then I finished my undergrad at Harvard where I ended up studying computer science and philosophy. I've already made a video about transferring. I've already made a video about NYU. Now we're going to talk about Harvard and we're going to use this uh, comprehensive framework essentially about I think everything you would maybe want to know, which includes financial aid, location, academics, social life, extracurriculars, working on campus, dorms and food, studying abroad, school spirit, career support, as well as what I deem like cultural values of Harvard. Now, as a reminder, this is totally my experience and like one person's experience and that is all I can speak to but hopefully it'll be somewhat useful in helping you figure out like what does an average cultural thing or what does it kind of look like to be a student at Harvard. Okay, beginning with financial aid, arguably Harvard has like the best financial aid in the world. I think that's like a fairly reasonable claim. Um, more than, I read on their website, more than 55% of their students are on some sort of financial aid or they receive some sort of scholarship and then parents who make less than $65,000 as a household, which is 20% of the population, get to go for free. Um, one of the other really cool things, which I did not know as an international student, is that the financial aid applies to you as an international student as well. You're not disadvantaged for being international. So all in all, A+, Harvard's really good about that. I wish more people knew that um, these like really top tier schools or whatever are not just like super expensive to attend. They actually make it really affordable for you to be able to attend. In terms of location, Harvard is located, or Harvard's campus is located in Cambridge, which is about 20 minutes away from Boston. You can take a T, which is like their metro, and it's very, very convenient. It's also very close to MIT, probably a 10 minute drive away, but it is actually um, somewhat of a bubble, or you can think of it as like a small town that is its own thing and is very much dominated by Harvard. Being in this environment has certain pros and cons from like a location and size perspective. Um, I think some of the pros include the fact that there are more things to do than you would think. So it's not super duper isolated. You can have shops, restaurants, you can go in to Boston if you're interested. Um, and another really cool thing about Harvard being like sort of a bubble, but also very open uh, is that the vast majority of people you meet like anywhere on campus are going to be Harvard students. This is as opposed to like, for example, NYU, which is in a city. And there's just a lot of safety and comfort in knowing the fact that everyone you speak to um, goes to Harvard and, and is a student and you can like verify which house they went to, they live in, etc. That's just a random thing. Um, and then in terms of cons, I would say being like a medium sized small town thing, some of the cons include, well, you don't have access to a ton of things um, and it's also small enough such that your it's easy for your reputation to precede you or there can be a little bit more gossip than you would experience in a really, really big school just because it is a smaller location and is more contained of like student body. Now we are going through academics and we're going to cover the quality of teaching, the flexibility of your schedule as well as course availability. Um, like with any school, the quality of teaching really varies based on the professor. You'll learn just by talking to people what are good and bad classes. Um, you can find lots and lots of classes, particularly in the humanities and social sciences that are very small, like 10-ish people-ish, and then you have big lecture classes as well. Uh, but yeah, the key takeaway I've learned in college is like, without a doubt, go with the best professors. Um, good professors teaching pretty much anything is interesting. Bad professors teaching pretty much anything is uninteresting. Um, so yeah, in terms of like who the TAs and uh, we also of course assistants are at Harvard, uh, in the humanities and the social sciences, they tend to be PhD students or master students. Um, in the STEM fields, they tend to be undergrads which I think is a little bit unique and like kind of has a weird quality to it, but it's kind of cool having your peers teach you. It's also kind of weird having your peers teach you. But yeah, that is the case at Harvard undergrad. Um, in terms of schedule flexibility, by and large, I think Harvard has a very flexible schedule. Even when there are things that you are required to do, like a certain number of gen eds or general education classes, you can still pick which 
gen eds out of like many, many options you want to take. And then for example, the basic computer science degree, at least when I took it, was only 10 classes that you mandatorily needed for your degree. And then afterwards you had like a lot of flexibility to take options within and outside of your major. It's also pretty easy to do things across departments. In fact, I found it to be extremely easy to do things across departments. Um, they weren't very siloed. Um, and then finally, in terms of course availability, I would also say this is generally quite good. There are definitely a few super popular courses where you have like weird applications or you have to really pray to the gods in order to get into them. But as a whole, it is pretty easy to stay on track and it is pretty easy to get the classes that you want. In terms of the social life at Harvard, um, I've broken it down into various sections and this is always a really fun part to talk about. We're going to talk about the size, the student body composition, Greek life, making friends, and partying at Harvard. So in terms of the size of the school, the undergraduate population is about 5,000 people, which I think pretty squarely lies in like the medium size range. So it is small enough where, you know, it's you probably have heard of like a lot of people and friends of friends by the end of senior year, but it is still big enough where you will definitely not know everyone. Um, in terms of the student body composition, like just a few things to note. These are the same things I tried to separate out in the NYU video. Um, in terms of international students, it's not a super high population. I think it's like something like 10%. Uh, it's by and large like domestic students. When it comes to wealth, it's interesting because like statistically speaking, Harvard parents tend to be, like Harvard students tend to come from a wealthier class. Although you will note that um, people don't really act that way. Like people don't really show off wealth at Harvard, partially because it's pretty hard to, like you're in this campus kind of in the middle of nowhere. Um, but also because I think everyone always wants to feel like they got in on their own. And so people aren't like, showing off how rich they are usually and you have a huge range of wealth due to financial aid programs and like wealthy people's kids coming so you have this huge range um when it comes to politics i would definitely say it is somewhat liberal leading but it is probably more central than like a lot of other schools you can think of um that is because you have like you know far left but then you also have a very central and you have a very like somewhat far right or like right perspective as well. Um, so yeah, in pretty much every facet, I think Harvard has quite a bit of diversity when it comes to like the composition of the student body, though it definitely leans in certain ways. When it comes to Greek life, there are sororities and fraternities in the traditional sense, but they mostly, from what I remember, don't own property. And as a result, they don't like dominate social life the way that they do for a lot of other schools. However, Harvard has this thing called final clubs, which is very particular. You can Google it. There's like a lot of controversy around them. Um, and you can think of them essentially as like sororities or fraternities, but they do have a very big influence on the social life at Harvard. Why is that? Well, because it's, there's no, well, one, you can't like get, you can get carded very easily in um, Boston clubs and stuff. And so if you're underage, you can't go to like a club in Boston. Um, also, in terms of Harvard Square or like Harvard's campus, there is no club on campus. So where are people going to have social lives? Well, yeah, you can have social lives in like dorms and stuff like that. But if you want to throw a big party, you have to go to people who have houses. And the only people who have houses are the male social clubs. So you can see why they would uh, play an important role in the social life. You can read about them. There's like, it's complicated. You know, there's like lots of pros and cons. It's just something to note that's particular about Harvard's social life. Um, when it comes to making friends, one of the interesting things is that Harvard has a lot of scaffolding around that in that they really try and help you find the people that you would like. So for example, uh, in your freshman entryway, those are people who are sort of by design, hopefully going to be people you like uh, in addition to your roommates. And then by second semester freshman year, you decide your blocking group, which is a group of people that you're going to live with or live close to. Um, and those are a big part of your social life. And then when you move into your upperclassmen houses, you eat there, you live there. And so there's like a whole community built around that. In other words, 
it's not that Harvard handholds you, but it's like Harvard really has a lot of things by design to make you make friends, hopefully. And then finally, when it comes to partying, um, Harvard is like a wet campus by definition, which means like you can drink on campus. In terms of where the social life lives, people by and large party in dorms. Um, yep. And then every once in a while, you know, they party in final club houses, but it's not super common for people to go into the city like Boston. Um, and it is by no means a partying school. If on a Friday and Saturday night you are studying, you will be in the majority. Um, yeah, that's, yeah. In terms of extracurriculars at Harvard, there are a lot of options, although they are this very desegregated. And so there's no like, there's no good central repository to figure out what clubs you want to join. My suggestion would be go to the club fair at the beginning of the year, sign up for so many emails, just sign up for like all of the emails and then whittle it down from there. So as you go and figure out what you want and are interested in, just whittle it down from there, but start by casting your net really wide. Um, one of the odd qualities about clubs at Harvard that I have not experienced elsewhere is that everyone has a leadership title. And so to be part of the club, you have to be doing something. You're like the director of finance or you're the people manager or whatever, versus in some schools where you have like the leadership and then you have members, at Harvard, the members are all leadership. I don't know why. That's just like one of the qualities I've generally observed. Um, one thing to note is that I actually didn't write this down, but I really want to talk about it and I'll talk about it later, which is like exclusivity is like one of the core tenets of Harvard. And so getting access to some extracurriculars is really difficult. Others are really open. That's just something to note and I'll talk about it later. And then finally, in terms of sports, Harvard is not a sports school in the sense that like, it's not like everyone at the school really cares about sports. Um, the only game that everybody attends or that most people attend is Harvard Yale, which is the big football game every single year. Um, but sports are not like a huge part of Harvard's culture. With that being said, people who are recruited to be on sports teams or people who join sports teams build a lot of social life around that. Um, and we have, I think like, good or some good teams. Um, but yeah, it's not like a huge, huge thing. I was not a part of them, so I'm just observing from the outside. In terms of working while on campus, it's pretty common. I would say like the majority of people will hold a job during their time on campus. Um, in terms of on-campus employment, there's quite a lot of variety. Uh, you have a pretty common problem, which is like, it tends to be people who need to have jobs will get a job on campus versus other people have the option not to. With that being said, um, it is very common for people to be like CAs and like RAs and TAs and whatever for classes. Uh, in other words, a lot of people will work on campus at some point during their time. In terms of off-campus internships and employment, it's definitely a thing, but it is not a huge emphasis of the school, as in you can perfectly like just be a student and not work off campus, and that's considered very acceptable as well. In terms of dorms and food, now I can only speak to the upperclassmen houses because I transferred. I actually lived in Kirkland and then transferred to Winthrop, which by the way is kind of unusual, but yes, so I lived in two upperclassmen houses. That's all I can speak to. Um, in terms of like what happens uh, as a Harvard student, so you get put into a freshman um, entryway and you'll live in one place and you will have roommates that are hopefully like matched you by the end of freshman year, you'll have decided on your blocking group, which is people you want to live with, both as roommates and then people who you want to live nearby. And then at the end of freshman year, you get lotteried into one of the upperclassmen houses. Um, what's interesting is a lot of your life uh, is based on like which house you end up at in. And by the way, most people will end up in the same house from sophomore through senior year. One of the really interesting like cultural pieces of this is that your, a lot of your life is around your dorm. So for example, you, there's like a certain time that food is available and you are generally, you generally eat with your like house. You can eat at other houses during other, like during some times, but people often eat at their house. And as a result, there's a lot of like communal dining culture. Also, it's a really interesting like wealth equalizer because the culture is not to say like, oh, let's go get coffee at a coffee shop or oh, let's go get dinner somewhere. 
the vast, 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 vast majority of people for all four years live on campus and therefore will live in one of these like upperclassmen houses and therefore will be able to go to a dining hall with you for no cost in the sense that, yeah, like money doesn't determine your social life really, like which house you live in determines your social life. Um, and then in terms of the food, I mean, it's like fine. Uh, it's not like horrible. It's not amazing. Harvard has a lot of events um, throughout the year in which you can get access to like better food as well as clubs get access to better foods. But yeah, it's like very boring. In terms of studying abroad, there are, I believe, lots of options to study abroad, but it's not a super, super, super common thing to do. And it's not a common thing to do over multiple semesters. I think that's because people feel like it was hard enough to get here. Like, what do you mean I'm going to leave? Um, with that being said, there are a lot of good travel stipends, travel opportunities and travel grants. That's both just like random travel stipends. That's opportunities through clubs that will go to other countries. And even at, after you graduate, there's like travel grants that you can apply to. Oh, and if you're writing a thesis, being able to travel for your thesis is really quite easy. In terms of school spirit, I would say Harvard school spirit is pretty high. Like one of the heuristics is that people will wear, maybe this is just because we're, we're lazy, but people will wear like Harvard gear as the uniform around campus. And then also there are a lot of events for school spirit stuff. So for example, at the beginning of the year, there's a bunch of events. Harvard Yale is a really big deal. Um, then there's like Yard Fest, which is an all school event, as well as every house will host like formals and stuff like that. So yeah, I would say overall Harvard has like pretty high school spirit. In terms of career support, I would say Harvard is quite good at this. Um, between like your friends and your social groups who will be a big supporter of you and the school's official resources, you're pretty well covered. A topic that I'm not gonna cover extensively, but I'm just mentioning is like, it is actually just extremely beneficial to have Harvard on your resume when it comes to applying to things. If people tell you otherwise, they're probably just lying um, and it's not fair, but the benefit of having Harvard on your resume is that people will give you the benefit of the doubt. And the question is like, who do you give benefit of the doubt to? And so that's a privilege you get by going to that school. Okay, in this last section, we're gonna go through three cultural values that I have observed about Harvard. And as a reminder, everything I say is totally my own opinion and totally my own experience. The first is that Harvard is quite exclusive as a culture in the sense that one, it is hard enough to get in, but once you are in, um, people want to feel exclusive in a variety of other ways. And so getting into certain clubs is really difficult. Um, getting into certain social scenes is really difficult. This isn't always true. There are lots of open things, but I was surprised when I went that after you were accepted, there was still so much exclusivity in like as a cultural value. Um, another cultural value is that I think there are actually quite a few guardrails at Harvard in that, I mean, you can definitely choose your own path and like make your own adventure, but there's also a lot of like safety nets for getting a degree and, you know, like getting a career and things like that. So if you want a school that has a little bit more support in that sense, Harvard's a really good one for that. And then finally, um, a lesson I learned from Harvard people, not necessarily the school, but from Harvard students is, I think a lot of them really embody this idea that you can be multiple things, very multifaceted and be incredible and passionate about all of them. Like you'll find a lot of people who are passionate about like very odd things, like really good at poker, but also really good at physics or really loves computer science and does a lot of art. Um, that cross pollination of ideas and things is, is really amazing. Actually, the diversity from an academic and like academic interest perspective is so high because even the most popular majors like government, like computer science, like psychology, etc., do not make up a majority of the population. Every popular major is only like a plurality. Um, and as a result, it's not as if the school is dominated by like CS people or dominated by finance people or dominated by arts people. Um, there's a lot of diversity in that way. Okay, final thoughts. So as a reminder, all of these opinions are my own and my own experience, but I hope that this was a pretty comprehensive overview of what it was like when I was a student attending Harvard. I'd love to see other people do this because I think it would cover a lot of topics and would have been really useful when I was looking at schools. And then as per usual, if you have any questions or comments or suggestions or anything like that, 
feel free to leave them in the comment section because um, they give me a lot of awesome ideas and I really appreciate it. See you in my next video.